Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 480. I am so excited to have Brooke Hazen on the show. Brooke's an organic farmer, lifelong athlete, physical coach, health and fitness enthusiast, and an author. I'm really excited to talk about our subject today, which is a deep dive into ED uh, and, and uncovering what's going on in your health that is obstructing your, your, your sexual health. Uh, So what I love to look at is the body speaks to us in symptoms. And this is something I was taught by many of my naturopathic mentors over the years that the body, you know, we we weren't born with a manual. Right. But but if we listen really closely to the symptoms of our body, we can begin to hear the messages our body is trying to tell us in erectile dysfunction, both in men and women is a big uh, or I should I should back up sexual dysfunction in men or women, anyone Uh, Any adult who notices that they have um, a a difficult time being aroused or uh, painful sex or just all the issues around that or not even not even wanting it. No, any of that is a great indication of hormone imbalance, of pelvic floor dysfunction, of nutrient deficiency, and the list goes on and on. Um, In fact, erectile dysfunction, uh, just for for men as an example, is is, um, uh, an early sign of diabetes and heart disease uh, as a result because it's a cardiovascular issue. One of the one of the actual issues is cardiovascular. And Brooke, what I love is that you're really going to dive down deep into it and show us uh, the different aspects of, of, of this dysfunction and, and how we can heal our body holistically as a whole to have a, a healthy sexual life. Um, because that means it's, it's a symptom, right? So it means that if you have a healthy sexual life, it means that your hormones are balanced, your cardiovascular system's healthy. There's a lot of great things going on. Your pelvic floor is healthy. Um, so we're going to dive into all those things. Uh, but first I, I, I have some in, I'm just so curious about your organic organic farming um, company. I, I, I want to learn more about that as well. Can we talk about that first? Yes. Thank you for having me on. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So you have this beautiful organic farm in California and uh, you make you cultivate medicinal herbs and uh, the, 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 a special type of olives that are high in healing properties um how can we how can we buy your products uh it because i know you've got this little organic farm to help people gain access to these medicinal uh products that aren't just in the grocery stores well i'm moving largely direct to customer at this point so my website has all the information for getting engaged with my my organic farming part of myself besides Mm -hmm. my author part (laughs) Uh, and it's called gold ridge organic farms Gold Ridge Organic Farms.com. Great. Well, of course, the links, links to everything that uh, Brooke does is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast at LearnTrueHealth.com. And of course, the link to your book, You Are Not Broken, a holistic guide for men and women to heal the pathways of sexual dysfunction and restore relational harmony together. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, I've been seeing a pelvic floor physical ther- therapist uh, heal from my last two pregnancies and uh, just I'm learning so much about how for both men and women and and, and men it just goes so much more undiagnosed than women but that if there's an imbalance in the pelvic floor it can lead to all kinds of uh, pain or sexual dysfunctions and they might not even think to look there. So it's, it's, but, but that's just one aspect, right? There's other, the, the majority of it is, is, is diet and nutrition, which of course, uh, being an organic farmer, being really interested in medicinal uh, foods, you're seeing that there's a difference that when you consume medicinal quality foods, uh, versus just going and eating conventionally grown foods, uh, you see a big difference in your health. What what ha- what led you? Because you're such an enthusiast around health and fitness. What led you to become an organic farmer, and d- dive into this world? Uh, well, I just love to be connected to nature, and I wanted to do something with my hands that 
I could see the results of my work. Um, mm. And so I was interested in, in natural resources at first. And then over time, I uh, came a bit down to earth and started getting into organic farming. <laughs> and how many years have you been doing it? Oh, my whole adult life. I studied it in college. And um, ever since I got out of even in college, I started apprenticing. Uh, and then afterwards, I eventually started my own farm. Love it. Um, now, a little bit off topic, but I'm really curious with the state of affairs going on. Are you being affected by the uh, global fertilizer shortages? No, I believe that's more synthetic fertilizers and I'm organic. And um, so those are usually natural material. They are natural materials. Fascinating. So uh, we're going to see sort of a bump in the organic farming world because they aren't reliant on the fertilizers that now we have a massive shortage of. Yeah, yeah, we should, hopefully. Cool. Well, <laughs> keep keep buying organic, keep supporting those local farmers that are that are doing <laughs> such good for our bodies and for the world. I love it. Thank you. Well, okay, so tell your story. So what happened? So you went to school to become an, a farmer. You got super excited about organic farming. Um, what led you down this path that, that um, had you write this book? Well, this beautiful journey started several years ago when I started noticing the symptoms of erectile dysfunction. And I don't even like to use that word, erectile dysfunction, because um, that's really a word that's meant to sort of uh, cast a veil of mysticism and disempowerment over us. When I'm going to end up breaking it down for you, it's really nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, it's We have very simple and easy solutions for all the different types of ED I've identified, whether that's organic or neurological or energetic. And I actually had um, more of an arousal issue that's that's neurologically based. Um, so that's dopamine mainly. And mm. uh, I also had an energetic ED uh, from releasing my semen too often. And I was doing this because I was addicted to pornography and it really isn't a addiction. And I'll tell you why when we get into this further. But so what I did at the time, I had no idea what all this was. And and I did what everyone else thought, which was to reach out to Western medicine. And they, of course, prescribed me the only remedy they have, which is a very specific pharmaceutical for cardiovascular blood flow. And I actually had in millions of men actually and women actually have um, porn induced erectile dysfunction, which is a neurologically based form of, of erectile dysfunction or really an arousal dysfunction where we, we become desensitized to to sex, to our partner, and to life. Um, and it can escalate to the point where it eventually you no longer can get aroused to not only uh, your partner, a real life partner, which is what was happening to me, but also your favorite pornography. Eventually you become fully desensitized to life completely on every level. Um, so I didn't know all this. So I was experiencing debilitating side effects because I was being misdiagnosed and misprescribed just like millions of men right now with blood flow um, inducing pharmaceutical drugs um, when I actually had something that was easily fixable and curable uh, that was neurologically based. Um, so we don't realize how the immense burdens that men are under when they're addicted to pornography. There's a few different things happening all at once. There's this unneeded um, burden of, of debilitating side effects from the erectile dysfunction drugs I just mentioned, um, which causes fatigue and all kinds of horrible symptoms. But um, there's also uh, what I found out later was um, debilitating side effects of being addicted to pornography, which is perpetual dopamine crashes and the associated fatigue and uh, mood imbalance and distancing in the relationships that takes place. Furthermore, we have this undue burden of the scarlet letter that Western medicine places on men with the word erectile dysfunction and all the associated loss of identity and confidence and confusion and disempowerment that comes with it. So I was going through all these burdens at the time. And the reason I wrote this book is because I want to help others avoid this. And there are millions going through this right now. The fastest growing segment of ED 
is porn-induced erectile dysfunction and this energetic form of semen release to pornography. So as I was going through this process, um, I was going through so much. I was, I, I'll never forget it. I felt like a gerbil on, a, on an experimental wheel um, with all these different types of pharmaceutical EDs. And they were debilitating, they were um, exacting and mechanical, and I was dependent on them. And it was not in resonance with who I am, my heart and my soul. But during this time, I became, um, I was praying to God and I was um, praying for a natural drug which could um, not have side effects and works. And I was never going to get that prayer answered because God had so much more uh, in store for me besides a drug that I was dependent on, whether that's natural or that's pharmaceutical. Um, I, as I ran out of options um, and there was nothing left for me in the pharmaceutical realm, I fell into a deep depression for weeks at a time. And that was when I began to let go of my control and release myself completely into God's arms and pray for a true healing miracle. It was at that time that God actually did hear me and gave me a true hearing miracle. And God decided to start the journey that I was to take place of restoring not only the most incredible sexual health beyond what I ever could have imagined, but also my overall physical health, my relational health, and my mental and emotional health. And God also showed me how this is all intertwined. God is the ultimate holistic healer, the, the, the power behind all holistic healing. If we just let God in, we can unleash all the, po the power, unlimited potential of our mind. And the key to doing that I have found, and I'll never forget why God led me first to Your Brain on Porn website by Gary Wilson, was to show myself and everyone that this key, this foundation, all starts with our neurology, having a healthy neurology, meaning balanced dopamine levels, as well as our overall chi sexual energy by simply getting rid of our addictions to pornography and semen release. Uh, that is really where we must start. And that's where we, it's the foundation for really launching us into massive transformation on every level. It's all intertwined and connected. It is all holistic. I love it. You were led to this website, Your Brain on Porn. And and how how long did that did it take to reverse this issue and and be healed? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, this process uh, of rewiring and rebuilding and re regrooving our neurochemistry, these neurotransmitter hormones of dopamine, because this is a dopamine addiction when you're addicted to pornography, on par with actually the same level as cocaine and morphine addicts. In fact, the dopamine levels have been measured to be just as low as, dope, as uh, cocaine and morphine addicts. But um, this process takes anywhere from, it takes at least months. It takes sometimes a year. It could go as long as two years, but what I've found is that this process of rewiring um, and resensitizing ourselves to life um, actually can can take a couple of years and I'm still seeing increased sensitivity to everything around me. And this includes also sort of refraining from virtual type of imagery, not just pornography, but this whole fantasy of pixels on a screen, because it's really our neurology that's getting desensitized to, to life uh, by this whole fantasy of that's going on in our brain. Our brain cannot actually tell the difference with, between a fantasy and real life. So men actually believe they're on this successful campaign with mating with a wide range of novel mates, which is gets into the mating behaviors that is um, so prominent in pornography and in relationships today that is really poisonous to long-term sustainable relationships. But there's really three different kinds of ED. Um, and I want to demystify it. I want to educate us about it because I believe that there's so much myths and misconceptions around it that really Western medicine 
sort of promotes because indirectly because they really only have one tool for resolving it, and that is this one form of medication. They have no idea what to do with the fastest growing segment of ED, which is neurologically based ED. And they're never going to really give you a holistic approach that's uh, curative and preventative. Um, you can try as much as you want. They will never give that to you. Um, they only have this one tool. And even that one tool does not actually resolve organic ED, um, which is physical source of ED, which is what everyone talks about. You were talking about Kegels. And I get into all that deeply in the book. The second half of my book covers all of organic ED. But first, we have to really focus on the real problem. We have to go to neurologically based ED and energetic ED first. And those are the, the first two that I've found are the predominant source of ED taking place today and where we must go first. And we're actually the only ones capable. We're so empowered. We're the only ones capable of actually resolving the first two major types of ED, which is neurologically based and energetic based by simply refraining from pornography and semen release. Um, mainstream Western medicine can't do that for us. Nobody can do that for us, except each individual has to do that, that has this addiction. Um, so the, the three types are PIED, porn-induced erectile dysfunction, um, which we don't talk enough about neurology, but um, we need our neurology for getting aroused, not only to sex, and our partner, but to life. Um, and the second form is energetic ED, which is uh, has to do with our semen release, releasing our semen too often. And that just causes a depletion in our chi sexual energy. Our chi sexual energy cannot be separated from our overall energy because chi is really our life force. It's God within us. And dopamine is our drive, our inspiration, determination, and the will of God for us to become our ideal selves. God has given us this gift of neurochemistry and energies that we are simply abusing. And uh, Eastern traditions are totally familiar with this. It's just in the West, we aren't. And simply, we're simply abusing these gifts we've been given by God. And, and the answer is really easy and simple. It's to give up this addiction to pornography and semen release. That's the answer. Um, and then organic ED is the third one. That's the one that we always go to and we're sort of brainwashed to go to automatically. We get so focused on organic ED. And I'm, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't. Uh, I'm saying that first we need to focus on the first two because the reason is, is that you can have, even if Western medicine does prescribe the, if they luck out and that one little sliver of tool that they have for ED does actually find, land itself on someone that has blood flow restrictive ED, um, you're, they still may be watching pornography and releasing semen to pornography, and they will not resolve their ED until they first resolve those two. And then we can look at whether we have a blood flow issue or we have a hormonal issue. And all this is physical organic ED is definitely resolvable naturally without side effects. Uh, I go into it in my book with the chelation IVs um, for arteriosclerosis. But, you know, Western medicine doesn't, even with their ED medication, Viagra and all that, the blood flow inducing nitric oxide inducing medications, doesn't actually cure anything. I uh, Just so you're clear, um, I know you know this, Ashley, but those listening, it doesn't cure a thing. It actually just bypasses the real underlying source of the mm -hmm. issue, which is what is, and that's what I get into in my book, in my exploration that God led me on. I got to the real source of what is causing um, blood flow, um, ED, which is arteriosclerosis. But even deeper than that, it's not just arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is a symptom. What actually is causing nitric oxide dysfunction that Western medicine is is jump starting with nitric oxide inducing pharmaceutical ED medication. Well, the answer is what goes in our mouth. It's what we drink and eat. it's what we drink or breathe through the form of heavy metals. It's what we eat with animal based diet, which is full of um, saturated fats, carcinogens and free radicals. 
as well as pollutants and smoking. That's the source of arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is really a conglomeration of, um, it's a really a symptom. It's a, it's a conglomeration of plaque, calcification, and heavy metals. And um, we have ways to get rid of all this through chelation IV therapy, plaque X IV therapy, uh, and we can break up that conglomeration. I, I did it myself, actually, and there's numerous studies, which I'll cite later, that, um, that, get, that show that we do not need to have people dying anymore of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks. We do not need to have people suffering with the scarlet letter of erectile dysfunction. I have solutions in my book and that God has given me to give to everyone, that I pulled together all aspects of holistic health related to sexual health, because sexual health is intertwined with, with everything else, our neurology, our cardiovascular, our hormonal, and our nervous system, as well as our, our mental health, emotional health, and our relationships. It's all intertwined, and, and I think Western medicine wants to make us think you can isolate sexuality, sexual dysfunction to simply the genital pelvic region and take one pill, um, one little pill that's going to resolve it, a, a pill will never replace true healing. Right. <laughs> I, you just summed up my entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd love that. <laughs> Pharma pharmaceutical, okay, drug-based medicine has its place. It's a small, it should be, a, if you're looking for results, if you're looking for getting to the root cause, if you're looking for true health, pharmaceutical-based medicine is a very small slice of the pie. Very, very small. But what we've been raised to believe is that it's the whole pie. Or, or, you know, 95% of the pie and that there's some alternative pie you can go explore. But really, first, you should get on a bunch of drugs. So the first thing we have to do is we have to pull ourselves out of the matrix that we've been born and raised in. That we have been brainwashed since birth to believe that the medical industry is is the best and has all the answers and our the md with the with their little prescription pad has all the answers right and if you're listening mm -hmm. to this podcast you probably have a clue that they don't um i've had so many doctors on my show who went through the medical system went, you know spent half a million dollars and eight to 12 years to become these amazing doctors only to find that they are there. They just they, they were really they, they paid for an education that taught them how to sell drugs and that they weren't getting results. They weren't actually helping their patients. And so many of the doctors I've interviewed then had health issues of their own and their own their own style of medicine couldn't heal them. So then they had to find natural medicine. And that's what healed them. And then they woke up and they went, oh, my gosh, I, I was brainwashed in a system. These th drug based medicine, again, very small slice of the pie. But the problem is we've been brainwashed to believe it's the pie. It's the whole pie. And once we wake up and realize we have to advocate for ourselves, we have to do things like listen to podcasts and buy, you know, read books, learn from people like Brooke Hazen, who's showing us that the mainstream medical system will never ever talk to you about your dopamine levels, about porn addiction, about your energetic health, about your, you know, your pelvic floor health, about uh, ways that you can reverse heart disease and the diet and the chelation and all the things that you can do to reverse heart disease. Uh, they're, you're not, they're not, your doctor's not going to talk to you about that. You have to go out and you have to find the right holistic doctor. You have to find the books. You have to find the information yourself. We have to advocate and, and we have to be the conductor of our orchestra, right? The orchestra is all the holistic people that we go to, the chiropractor and the, the homeopath and the acupuncturist and the, the naturopath, all, like our whole orchestra is there to help us, but we're the conductor and we have to take matters into our own hands and be willing to explore different things, like be willing to throw out, unplug the TV 
un- uh, unplug it. Stop, stop watching the news. Stop watching, like you said, stop watching the screen. Stop watching the, you know, put the, put the cell phone away. Stop watching porn, right? And address the dopamine imbalance. And this is for men and women. I know, I know men largely, statistically largely more men than women watch porn, but it's, this is not just a male issue. I believe that all people, all adults, and the problem is now children have access to it younger and younger and younger in this, my state of Washington, they're teaching masturbation to fourth graders in our public school system. It's getting kind of weirder and weirder out here. Um, but what we have to get is that is that uh, addiction. I've had a great interview with jo- Joan Iflin, and we talked about this addiction. Brain is not just alcohol or or methamphetamines or cocaine. It can be porn, right? It can be alcohol, yes, but it could also be something that's that that is more socially acceptable, right? It could be sugar. It could be it could be, you know, drinking, drinking wine, but it could be porn. It could be whatever you're addicted to, whatever it's causing this dopamine imbalance. And the, then the dopamine imbalance gives you this plethora of um, of effects, of side effects, which one is, you know, sexual dysfunction. But the other is, like you said, you have distance with your partner. Maybe you're quick to anger. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're unmotivated, agitated. You know, there's it, it'll show up in your work performance. It'll show up in your, you know, even in your um, willingness to live, <laughs> you know, willingness to like go out there and live a life and your enthusiasm or your zest for life starts to just deplete. It's and, and from a, I don't know, more of a spiritual sense. It, it, it's almost like demonic energies, demonic vampires, right, are sucking the life out of us when we plug into these, uh, these little outlets that give us temporary pleasure, but then drain us, just suck us dry of the 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 vital life force. So we have to be really protective of of where we go to get our pleasure. Right. Go get your pleasure from walking with your partner, holding their hand and looking at a sunset or or go play with play with your kids or grandkids or, you know, your nieces, nephews at the park. Get pleasure from 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 something that's wholesome and and and, and protects protects you from these outlets that might give you temporary boost and pleasure, but then completely suck you dry of your vital life force. So I just I see that it's it's a what you're talking about is part of this grand scheme to keep us as as rats just so preoccupied running around so preoccupied we don't wake up to yeah. advocate for ourselves. It's kind of amazing because the elephants in the room are so in front of us but nobody's talking about it in western medicine with blood flow issues related to ED nobody's talking about diet about when it comes to arteriosclerosis nobody talks about the root cause of it heavy metals have been shown to be a very big factor now but also what we're eating the the food we're eating is what's causing it as well as smoking and environmental pollutants the other elephant in the room nobody talks about with ed is this pornography epidemic we're at the end of a two decade long massive experiment on the global population with free internet porn. And the results are in and they are harrowing. There's an entire generation of young men who are unable to perform sexually with a real partner and engage in any connective, intimate relationship. (laughs) It's really a dopamine addiction. And I wanna tell you why this is. Um, What we don't understand in the West, but Eastern traditions are well aware of for millennia is the enormous toll that an ejaculation really is semen release. That's why I don't say ejaculation. I say semen release because we can still we can still ejaculate and have full body orgasms. It's this semen release that causes this intense dopamine drop where dopamine crashes and prolactin rises and this intense refractory period and period of replenishment takes place where the body pulls all the most precious resources of growth factor hormones and nutrients from all the parts of our body with the sole purpose of replacing that vital sperm. This really is our liquid gold. And so the pornography and semen release is a super stimulus and it's because it combines the two. It combines 
the semen release with that dopamine effect that I just mentioned, which causes massive mood swings, fatigue, and distancing in the relationship. Um, but it's also the super stimulus of the the novelty, the constant novelty that takes place with pornography, where we're just desensitizing and building these these neural pathways in our brain that's specific to just what gets us aroused. And this is what slowly replaces our partners in real life. That's actually what's happening. So it's this super stimulus that's taking place. And um, actually the the brain cannot tell the difference between a chemical addiction like uh, alcohol, um, morphine, cocaine, and a neurological addiction which is pornography. And so it's this, um, what happens is the brain actually is completely overwhelmed with this super stimulus of the, of the imagery combined with the dopamine crashes of the semen release. And the brain starts canceling out dopamine receptor sites and dopamine levels, and they crash to very low levels. And as I mentioned, these are gifts we've been given. This, this affects not just our sexual performance, our sexual performance, but you know our arousal to and to life, really, to everything. Because uh, our physical selves, our physical health is completely inseparable from sexual health. There, you know, the the um, the lingam is really the protruding member of you know a vast orchestra, as you mentioned, of neurological, nervous, cardiovascular and endocrine or hormonal health. It's really um, the canary in the coal mine that that will shout out, you know, what our level of health or disease is currently within those systems. Um, but again, we the key to unlocking and to making it easier for us to make massive transformations physically uh, lies in this neurology, the balanced neurology and the balanced energy levels. Um, and people freak out around uh, the concept of semen retention, but really there are so, it's such a misconception. It's actually um, the opposite of what we think. Um, the benefits of semen retention is so enormous. I mean, first you have increased sensitivity and potency sexually. Um, then you also have a, a prolonged sexual experience where you're actually able to come into alignment with your with your partner and women are usually just getting warmed up at the moment, the man is finished. So this gets us in alignment where we can have a much more connective relationship. And most importantly is we avoid the poison and the distancing that takes place through this mating behavior of, of re releasing semen with the sole goal of, of getting to climax. Um, we can through Caretza, Dao and Tantra for millennia, Eastern Eastern cultures have been aware of this and have been supplanting this mating behavior um, with bonding behaviors. And this actually can build um, long term relationships through, you know, eye gazing, caressing, um, you know, uh, deep connective sensual play and and uh, respecting, honoring um, communication, um, embracing, holding uh, all these behaviors build um connective connection through oxytocin um, mating behaviors are focused really driven by dopamine we want to just get that in balance we want to have balanced dopamine levels by disengaging in any form of pornography and we want to get balanced energy through semen retention and we want to have connective um, relationships through building oxytocin based behaviors can you give us examples of behaviors that would help us to balance this um, in, in, in our day-to-day -day lives? Um, yeah, well, um, so bonding has, you know, mating and bonding behaviors, this is something that Marnia Robinson, who wrote a review for my book, goes into in detail in her book, Cupid's Boys and Darrow. And my book actually draws together all the different types, you know, the, the neurology of pornography, the neurology of relationships, you know, and then also organic ED and overall physical and mental, emotional health, spiritual health. I tie it all together, but she talks about in there how through through studies, it's shown that um, this over hundreds of thousands of years, we've the brain has developed these these neural pathways of 
either bonding or meeting-based behaviors. We have both. And um, we're able to actually, um, we talk about, um, <laughs> when we talk about uh, biohacking, biohacking is reclaiming our vitality, vibrancy, vibrancy and youthful vigor. Um, this is actually a big biohack, is supplanting mating behaviors with bonding behaviors. And um, this, you know, bonding behaviors are, we've built over 100,000 years through um, family, friends, um, through our, our immediate culture, um, through our babies, through our immediate family. Um, these are the kind of behaviors that are extremely connected and build oxytocin. Um, so the mating brain, the mating behavior, um, which pornography fits perfectly into, is actually incredibly poison and destructive to long-term relationships because the real sole goal of, of mating, the mating brain, the mating behavior, is to spread maximum gen genetic diversity to a wide range of novel mates. And there's really no end to this search. There's no end to this dopamine addiction of this novel search and this um, dopamine crashes. In fact, I mentioned the the dopamine crashes. Um, you know, uh, when we have this semen release, the brain um, dopamine levels crash, and this process of replenishment and uh, refractory period lasts for up to two weeks. In fact, the largest ver reverberations can take place at the two-week level. Um, I can tell you as a man that when we're addicted to pornography and even just in masturbation in general, but usually pornography is involved almost all the time, that men are, are releasing their semen, not just every few days, definitely not every two weeks, but they're doing it daily usually, and sometimes multiple times per day. Now, what that means is we're getting a perpetual state of chronic fatigue, mood imbalance, and distancing in the relationship. It's truly poisonous to relationships. And that's where sexual health crosses into relational health. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, this, this, this concept that um, by um, over, over stimulating yourself with pornography or, or sort of um, over masturbation, that, that one is in this brain the brain is in this mindset of um wanting to spread the seed as opposed to grow roots in a relationship uh and so they become what restless within the relationship they become agitated they're not they're not bonded they're not connected to emotionally to their partner and they're are they looking around are they looking to cheat is this is this mm -hmm. some are, is is does pornography lead to um infidelity yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. It, it leads to uh, it's going to inevitably lead a partner towards finding a new novel mate in the relationship, just like is happening with pornography, where it's an escalating addiction where men and women, they're actually women are also um, are can get addicted to pornography. It's just that women choose more connective behaviors. Only 26% of women end up watching pornography weekly, whereas men are at 80%. I think mm -hmm. it's probably more. But you, you talked about this two week, it takes up to two weeks after what one ejaculation for for dopamine to rebalance. Can you can you dive into that and explain that a bit more? Yeah, um, so uh, there this this Science shows that <clears throat> that when a semen is released, that this refractory period, this period of replenishment where um, prolactin rises and, and dopamine crashes, continues in that sort, sort of ratio for up to two weeks. And it weaves up and down. So maybe you, in a few days, you'll sort of come out of the, 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 the overwhelming haze of the, the first few days can tend to be more intense. But... This does continue for up to two weeks, it's been shown. Um, so what we're getting is overlapping cycles of dopamine crashes and prolactin rising. Uh, I mean, 
forget it. If if men are, are releasing semen multiple times per day or once a day or even every few days, they're in a chronic perpetual state of crash dopamine levels. And again, dopamine is our drive, our inspiration, our determination. It's that's how we become our ideal selves. It's that motivation to be the best we can be. Uh, we're we don't have that anymore. And, uh, you know, it's interesting with pornography. This is all so new for people that don't understand this in the West. But and this is a new experiment that's coming too. But um, we don't understand that what men are going through is actually prolactin is actually going back to the, the replenishment cycle. Prolactin is actually what causes fatigue. It's a chemical that causes fatigue. Um, and the dopamine is that important what's we need for life and so what i think i was going to say is that we don't realize that um, this truly is an addiction that like if if we had a cocaine or morphine addict or an alcoholic let's say and that was our partner in real life uh, we would we would not expect them to be fully capable of having a an intimate beautiful you know best relationship they can possibly have to have be at their peak physical conditioning and to have balanced neurology. Would we, 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 while expect they're fighting, that. while they're fighting the addiction or while they're in the addiction, while they're in the, while they're using, while they're in the addiction, when they're okay. unaware of the addiction and even while they're still in the grips of it, even if they're aware that they want to get out of it, right. we, we wouldn't expect that. But with pornography, we're completely unaware that this is the same as an addiction. The brain cannot tell any difference between the an alcohol, cocaine, or morphine addiction and a porn addiction because these are all dopamine addictions. The even we have food addictions that are are dopamine driven also. All mm -hmm. these are dopamine. Uh, really, what and that's why I get into you know organic ED, which I want to get into. Mm -hmm. um, you know, diet is so important. I mean, we could. We could end up using collation therapy and get rid of our um, our symptoms of, you know, arteriosclerosis as a symptom, which is we can get rid of the free radical damage. We can get rid of that calcification and plaque buildup and heavy metals. But if we're continuing to eat a animal based diet, uh, which is the source of of this free radical damage, oxidation through, you know, saturated fats and and uh, carcinogens. Um, and as we continue to not uh, uh, deal with the heavy metal buildup in our bodies, which is so important, and, and collate that out, um, we're through the diet. We're going to continue to just keep creating the same problem. We'll never resolve the source of of organic ED through cardiovascular. You know, there's really different a few different markers that urologists look at with organic ED, which is physical ED. That's where we always jump to. We're always like, oh my god, oh my god, physical ED. Well, first we got to deal with neurological and energetic, but we can also heighten our, even if we don't have organic ED, we can, you know, we can better our, our um, we can increase our sexual health um, and prevent further possible organic ED in the future by looking at hormonal. Um, that's what they look at first um, and that, or they look at in addition to blood flow. They don't really look at blood flow. They just prescribe medications, but um, hormonal, we can resolve easily with pellet, bioidentical pellet therapy, TRT, um, testosterone replacement therapy. It's bioidentical, it's natural, it's pellets that mimic as best as we can find the natural cycles of hormones, um, testosterone within our body. Um, they'll look at blood flow, um, and that's where I get to the root source of it, and that's where you know, if we don't look at this holistically, where we're looking at diet too, um, we're going to just continue to have the same problem because there's this big elephant in the room that is standing right in the middle of our living room that Western medicine and Western culture is not willing to talk about, mm -hmm. which is what we're eating, this heavy metal exposure we have, environmental pollutants, smoking, pornography, and too much semen release. So it's like all lifestyle. I mean, it's all lifestyle. And and then we go to the doctor and they want to give us a drug. And that's, it's, it's, yeah, I love the meme 
I keep seeing it on Facebook. I love the meme. You know, I, I keep trying to follow the science, but it keeps leading me to the money. And and that's just mm-hmm. it. The, the the pharmaceutical industry, which is petroleum based. And please, if you want to go down a fun rabbit hole, go down the rabbit hole of the history of the modern medical system, beginning with petroleum based uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, it I've had a few guests on that talk about it, but it is a wild trip to go down the la- understanding the last 150, 120 years in and, and what's led us up to what, where we are now. Um, where you go to a doctor and they just uh, and we put them on such a pedestal and then they give us a drug that it is not in any way. It's like giving you an Advil or a Band-Aid. It's not in any way figuring out why you had the headache in the first place. It's just uh, and it's not fixing the problem whatsoever. The problem, like you said, it's it's um, it's neurological. We have we have such an, a dopamine addiction epidemic. If you're not watching porn, look in your life where you have a compulsion or an addiction where you have, do you have to watch, you know, copious amounts of TV or sugar? Or like I have a friend who she, she has to drink alcohol on the weekends. Like she, she'll, she'll, she'll not drink alcohol Monday through Friday, but on the weekend she has to drink alcohol. (laughs) And and it's just like, you know, that, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're an alcoholic, right? Because you and I think maybe an alcoholic is someone who's like shaking if they're not drinking alcohol, right? But if you, like she will, I talked to her because I was talking about doing a long-term fast and she's like, I can't fast. I have to drink alcohol on the weekends. I have to, I have to drink alcohol on the weekends. And I'm like, you can't skip a weekend like at all, like for your health to do like a seven day fast. Like if you want, you know, cause we were talking about doing a like a seven day or longer fast, absolutely not an option. She has to drink alcohol on the weekends. And, um, and when, if you have to, if, if there's like, I have to do this and you, you're not flexible, then there's an addiction there. If, if, if the substance is controlling your life and you can't leave that substance, like I dated a guy when I was a teenager who couldn't fly on airplanes because he wasn't able to smoke on the airplane. <laughs> like he wasn't willing to like not have a cigarette for two hours to take a flight somewhere. So if a substance is controlling your life, that's an obvious answer, but there's, there's less obvious ones. And sometimes our dopamine addictions are really in our blind spots. And so talking to someone who is in your life that you really trust and you can get vulnerable with to uncover what's going on, but like food is a big one, right? Food is a really big one. Do you get um, upset if you're not if you don't have access to the food you want, like if you don't get to have dessert or you don't get to have, you know, if there's some kind of food you like that you, that you want and you don't have access to it, do you get angry or irritated or do you, are you, do you have to have it? Right. That's, that's just, just an example of, um, of food, you know, there's this food addiction that could be obvious. Like, you know, you're binge eating, but there, there can be less obvious ones. Like, um, you always, always have to have the certain thing in your house because you have to eat it every day. Um, so looking at how we can uncover this, um, I have a, I had a friend, unfortunately, he's passed away, really nice guy who was a raging alcoholic. And then he quit cold turkey because his family he was losing everything, including his family. And so he quit cold turkey and he was amazing after that. Um, sober for 20 years. But every time I visited him, he had a cigarette in one hand and a candy bar in the other. He absolutely traded one addiction for another. Now he was sober and he was paying the bills and loving on his family, but he he always had Halloween candy all year round. It was amazing how many bags of Halloween candy he'd buy at Halloween because he always had giant bags of Halloween candy surrounding him when he sat at the couch and a cigarette in one hand and like just constant candy and sugar in the other. And if you go to AA meetings, you'll see they always have copious amounts of sugar because they're, yes, you, I, I'm so proud of them for, for, for gaining sobriety from alcohol, but they actually didn't stop. They did not conquer the addiction. They didn't balance their dopamine levels. They're still using, they're just traded in one drug for another. So when someone stops porn, the first thing the brain's going to want to do is trade in one addiction for another. And that's what we want to make sure we set ourselves up for is success. So we don't do that. We want to set ourselves up so that we heal the, like you said, heal the nervous system, heal the dopamine levels. And dopamine's not the only chemical going on in our brain. Like my interview with Joan Ifland, um, who's a PhD in, in, um, 
in addiction and she, and she talks about balancing different brain chemicals but i love brooke that you are a shining light on this on this taboo subject because we really want to um take you so men and, and again women are affected by this too in a different way like I, I believe they're they're affected in a similar way i should say but men in our society still are taught they're not allowed to be vulnerable they have to be strong and tough they're not allowed to have emotions they're not allowed to have breakdowns you know and and, and there's a lot of shame and hid, hidden shame and so for you to shine light on such a taboo subject where men feel so they can't feel like they they cannot talk about it right so you're bringing healing to an a part of humanity where human humanity has not been allowed to shine light on this and and heal so i'm i love the work that you're doing thank you well dopamine is a cycle that builds you know further dopamine addictions uh it's cyclical so that's why i said uh, and god really is telling us that the gateway to allowing God into our lives and for massive transformation on a healing level holistically, opening that door to that massive change in our life really starts with, with balancing the neurology and the energies that we're, we have within us, those gifts we have. It has to start there. You were going to mention some studies um that you said you talk about later mm, yeah do you, do you have those studies yeah and I also yeah i do want to get into that i also just want to say too about i mean my book's full of um biohacks i mean the, the the mother of all biohacks is what i just said is that nobody talks about is balanced neurology and energy that's the launching pad for that i've experienced i can tell you firsthand this is how i went through this incredible transformation. And I believe that's why God led me to that, to this and had me write this book. I promised God I'd write this book, but I also want to get into the organic further and talk about the, the, you know, when I mentioned a plant-based diet or I mentioned an animal-based diet and how that's the elephant in the room, we can have a plant-based diet. And it's really the, the pinnacle of all diets is a plant-based diet, but we can, if we're not careful, we can still have problems with a plant-based diet. You, you know, we, Oreos uh, are vegan. They're, <laughs> Oreos are vegan. So yeah, right. You got to watch so, out. This a plant. If you buy packaged foods that it says plant-based on it, like just walk away, shop the primer of the grocery store. Don't go down the aisles. Processed yeah, it, um, food is not like this. Like these Franken foods, they're they're not healthy if they're full of oil, like full of these processed oils, polyunsaturated, fatty, whatever, like all that stuff. You don't want to eat it. You don't want to eat the canola oil and the all that stuff, right? You want to eat yeah, real because food. if we um, if we eat like lots of uh, flowers, you know, um, you know, not edible flowers, but you know, grain flowers, um, you know, we're going to end up having a lot of obesity take place, which I've had experienced myself in the past. So I'll call it a light plant based diet, meaning it's full of light, like high end vegetables and fruits in different forms, how we prepare it, um, nuts. If we're gonna have grains, just have a small amount of quinoa or you know whole grains, but stay away from processed flours. But that's really important. I also wanted to talk about, before we get into um, your question about the collation therapy and those studies, um, I wanna mention that something really amazing, which is another biohack is donating blood. Um, you never would have guessed this, but donating blood um, decreases a chance of heart attack by 88% with just one donation per year. Now, we should be practicing this on every level, but Western medicine doesn't clearly not telling us about this. But I'm telling you now, donate blood. It's like an oil change for your body. It, it reduces iron stores and oxidants in our body and increases antioxidant capacity. Now, when I get back, when going back to what I mentioned earlier about uh, the source of arteriosclerosis, the source of blood flow ED, which we're also scared of because that's the only tool that Western medicine has. They really don't know what they're doing. So that's all they can do is prescribe that one medicine because it's money driven. But the source is free radical damage. So the different ways to get to that is to get rid of the free radicals, which is the heavy metals through IV chelation therapy, plaque X, which gets rid of the, um, it's a natural source from soybean, which gets rid of the plaque buildup. That gets rid of that, that breaks apart that arteriosclerosis. 
Um, but we also can add in antioxidants, both IV as well as um, orally. It's just that IVs are much more transformative than oral because it bypasses the digestive tract and 100% of these chelations, nutrients, and antioxidants are able to go to every cell of our body as opposed to a fraction through oral. Um, and actually, holistic, the holistic health sector of our of our medicine is moving more and more in this direction it's 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 we can heal cancers arteriosclerosis um immune system issues you know um through myers myers cocktail i've seen an enormous boost in my um immune system and i add in nad which uh nad is anti-aging it's another biohack that these are incredible biohacks um NED uh, increases the, the length of our, our of our DNA strands, which is literally anti-aging and happening in front of our eyes. It increases energy levels, clarity, mental clarity, and also rebuilds um, receptor sites like dopamine that have been, and we can rebuild chemically, neurochemically um, from, from ED, from addiction to pornography, from dopamine crash levels. Um, you know, but the, the studies for the chelation therapy are, are astounding. There was a study in 1991. There hasn't been, um, well, there's been a TACT-1 study and TACT-2 study that's that's recent. But this other study from 1991 involved 22,765 patients. And 87% of them had marked improvement in vascular disease with just one course of disodium EDTA. Now, in this podcast, I'll tell you, I, I recommend calcium EDTA. It does the same thing as disodium EDTA, but back then they were using disodium EDTA for the study in there. Um, they estimated that in 1991, that 363,000 of the 407,000 bypass surgeries that year could have been avoided, saving an estimated $8 billion. Um, yeah, $8 billion. With a B. Uh, when you say saving, you have to remember, no, 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 no. It was making them $8 billion. Mm -hmm. It was profit. Exactly. Profit. Um, that, and that's the politics of this is astounding. So the TACT-1 study, which is the trial to assess chelation therapy, it's a government-based study, um, showed a 51% reduction in cardiac events and a 43% reduction in mortality in patients with diabetes. I'm going to repeat that again. A 51% reduction of cardiac events and a 43% reduction in mortality in patients with diabetes after receiving one course of disodium EDTA, which is, I believe it's around, you know, it can be anywhere from 20 to 30 different IVs. But um, when you combine plaque X with this, as I mentioned before, this is sort of the trifecta of getting rid of this heavy metal calcification and plaque X, which causes arteriosclerosis. Now, we should be practicing this in on a massive scale. And actually, as holistic health uh, people, we need to be demanding this because right now we're at war with mm -hmm. the FDA and the different political bodies and, and insurance companies and pharmaceutical industries um, who are selling statins, um, you know, uh, and they are trying to, you know, hinder and harass this process of obtaining these. So we should demand this. We should absolutely demand that they need to stop killing people because statins are actually been shown to increase um, deaths from cancer and heart attack because they're actually um, lowering our LDL cholesterol artificially. Well, again, they're missing the entire picture. LDL is a symptom. LDL cholesterol is produced in increasing amounts. It's an antioxidant, antiviral, anti-cancer. And it's our only source of protection, other than these chelation IV therapies, from free radical damage. They're missing the entire picture that the source of arteriosclerosis is free radical damage. Mm -hmm. Arteriosclerosis mm -hmm. is a symptom of, of what they're trying to sell us with these statins, these pharmaceuticals. And they're actually doing the opposite. They're actually killing people uh, mm -hmm. by giving them these statins. <laughs> So just to, this is, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a little sec to teach yeah, you something. Go for it. <laughs> so statins, so for those who don't know, because this is so monumentally important, I was taught this by my naturopathic physician mentors. 
statins. So the, the, they believed that cholesterol caused heart disease because they looked at, let's say, a heart and they said, oh, look, there's a clog in the heart. There's cholesterol in that clog. Therefore, cholesterol causes heart attacks. That is like saying showing up to a house fire, seeing that there's firemen there and saying there's always firemen when I see a fire. So firemen cause fires. Exactly. That is so. So cholesterol, the blockage is not the cause. It is a symptom of a problem. Yes. And what they decided to do is the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry just just like the pharmaceutical industry decided to you know quote unquote treat or cure ed by by giving you viagra or some kind of vaso you know uh, something that increases the vas the the vasculature when when we know it's actually seldom just a a blood a blood flow problem it's seldom a blood flow problem but they've got a pill and they're treating all forms of erectile dysfunction with a pill that only tr only forces the body to do one thing, right? So the same with with quote unquote preventing heart disease, right? They give you a statin. Now, what do statins do? And this this is very enlightening. The liver uh, cholesterol is so important for your health that your liver makes it. I could be eating a raw food vegan diet where I'm only eating salads and fruit occasionally some nuts there's many people out there that eat that way i could be eating that diet and my my i still have cholesterol in my body right my liver makes it it's so important your liver makes it it's protective of every cell in the body every cell 37 trillion cells in the body have a um a fat layer that is the cell wall. Your your ner nervous system has insulation, just like your house. All the wires in your house have insulation, so that there's no there's not an electrical fire. So too, your nervous system has insulation, and that insulation is made of cholesterol. It's made of healthy fats. So your brain has cholesterol. Your sex hormones and stress hormones, both of them, very important for your for your optimal health, are derived from these healthy fats. The, this this type of cholesterol. So your your body needs needs this. And I'm not saying go out there and eat a keto diet where you're like always eating fat. I'm not saying consume high amounts of fat. I'm just saying yeah, that can be it's dangerous. so important. Yes, it's so important that I could I could eat a very sort of clean and not eat any cholesterol. Right, I could eat no cholesterol at all. Right, I'm not eating any animals. I could eat no animals, just just like salads and apples, and some seeds. And my liver will make all the cholesterol my body needs. Mm -hmm. Now, yep. statins, what they do is they bruise the liver so much, they damage the liver, yeah. that the liver ceases to produce the amount of cholesterol it was producing. That's mm -hmm. all statins do. So the doctor mm -hmm. says to you, oh, wow. your cholesterol's high. I'd like you to have lower cholesterol. Here, please take this drug. Now, back until I it was up until I think it was 2012 and you can go and it's actually in wiki. It's like on mainstream websites, you can find the history of the statins. But up until 2012, that you had to go in for regular blood tests. It was either every three months or every six months, but regular, like more regular than once a year. You, if you were on statins, you had to go for regular blood tests to test your your liver enzymes to make sure that the statins were not over damaging your liver and over comp basically over compromising your body because the drug is designed to punch your liver to the point where your liver stops functioning enough that's what statins oh, do God. now as it's a terrible. side effect of of of, of of hurting the liver so much as a side effect you then develop neuropathy how many and just raise your hand if you have a family member who's been on statins and now can't feel their hands or feet and starts mm. falling because i have three family members who won't listen to me you know i mean you know right the, this yeah. is just this is the the problem right that because the doctor has the the, pl the plaque behind them mm -hmm. and the half a million dollar you know medical degree that, that mm -hmm. says they know better and and these people are now they're elderly, so their body doesn't have enough cholesterol. It's damaged their liver. Now it's damaged their mm, sex hormones and stress horrible. hormones. Now it's damaged their nervous system. Your myelin sheath is being eaten away because you don't have enough of this healthy cholesterol, and you get neuropathy. And you also have neuropathy from from other things too. But statins are known to long term effect cause neuropathy. So now you can't feel your feet, and then you can't. You end up falling. 
So I, I actually had three family members who were constantly falling and hurting themselves because of the neuropathy, because of the long-term use of statins. Very frustrating that statins are still being recommended on a regular basis when it is it is is like it's like saying we have to get rid of firemen we, we need to defund the fire department because firemen cause fires that's the same logic now i've had um i believe five cardiologists on my show award-winning cardiologists on my show and all of them say statins should not be you got to th throw them out well Dump them down the toilet, but really take them back to the pharmacy and have them disposed of correctly. But <laughs> throw them, throw them out. They do not work. Uh, I had Dr. Esselstyn on my show, and he he wrote the book How to Reverse and Prevent Heart Disease, and he shows that that with a diet, a whole food, a very clean whole food plant based diet, very specific. He has a specific, so he lays it out a plan, and when you follow it people's erectile dysfunction goes away, but their heart disease goes away within two years. All clogs and all arteries are gone. So you can mop up and clean up the cardiovascular system with, with a, a, a clean, healthy diet. And it's something to look into. I'm, this is this, I often have guests on the show that, that boast the benefits of the whole food plant-based diet. And and then listeners think that that I'm being biased and it's like this is a vegan show. Listen, I also have had guests that talk about the benefits of eating organ meat. Just the fact is, look at the look at the proof. If you take someone who has heart disease and you put them on Dr. Esselstyn's diet, three months down the road, their their angina is gone. They're they they're not winded anymore. They can now they can they can walk long distances whereas they couldn't before. Mm -hmm. The the blood clots they had in their legs are gone. Like, you don't get that from any other. Uh, so even more than that, you can literally just drink water and you can cure yourself of all this and get off those medications. I mean, the elephant in the room that they will not talk about and really none of us really talk about is 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 an animal based diet that's causing these problems and heavy metals and other things. But this gets back to the pressure, the peer pressure, and I want to encourage everyone to let go of our fears, our myths and misconceptions, the addictions and negative habits that keep us bound, and the peer pressure from family, friends, cultural pressure, and corporate peer pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, let go of all that, um, because that is what is going to continue to keep us harming ourselves. We need to throw all that away. Really, uh, you know, I don't believe that Western medicine has any other place other than emergencies where, you know, they really, it's a sick care system. They're waiting for a mm -hmm. symptom that's serious to come up. And then they just patch it up with these pharmaceuticals and surgeries. That's all they have. It's, as you said in one podcast, I loved it. You said it's one sliver of medicine, but Really, for ED and for cardiovascular health, all this, our physical health, holistic health is the only way to practice curative and preventative natural modalities without side effects. Side effects are just a symptom that we are, we're reducing things too much. We're not looking at everything. And that's why we get side effects. They're looking at one process within one process within one process. They're not looking at the whole. They never will look at the whole if you expect anything like that from Western medicine, you will not get it. I guarantee you, you could ask any Western medicine doctor that truly believes in Western medicine, they will not provide any natural, holistic, curative and preventative types of healing modalities, period. Mm -hmm. um, only pharmaceutical surgeries. That's it, because that's what it's built on. It's built on sand. It's got huge limitations um, that we need to recognize and stop giving all our power away to corporations with, I even feel pressure to bring up a plant-based diet. Why? There's so much pressure around it. There's corporations through big pharma and animal industry are pressuring us and, and, and they're causing us to pressure each other. Um, and I feel, I'm, I feel close down that I'm not allowed to bring it up. That's not right because the science shows we should live by the science. Everything I have in my book is 111 scientific studies that are firsthand studies that back it up. We should go by the science. It shows that the plant-based diet um, saves, uh, protects us from the 15 leading 
causes of death in the world. Um, you know, um, it actually protects us from cancers and from cardiovascular disease. It fights against that. Mm. It, instead, it gives it to us. I also want to talk quickly before our time ends about a couple more really important biohacks. There's intermittent fasting, which has to do with diet. Um, you know, this burns visceral fat. Visceral fat is a, a very, it's the most harmful form of fat. It wraps around our organs. It's linked with all kinds of diseases, neurodegenerative, cardiovascular diseases, cancers. Um, but when you go from, uh, to deeper hours, like if you go to 18 to 24 hours fasting, you start to burn off misshapen cellular components that cause neurodegenerative diseases and cancers. Um, so that's a, that's an incredible biohack I found. I practice it every day. I've been doing it for two years. And um, another biohack that I really love um, is, um, uh, well, I mentioned donating blood. Um, there's a stem cell PRP for ED. Um, PRP is platelet, uh, it's a, uh, I'm sorry, PRP is um, uh, is a, it's where you spin your blood, um, at your own blood at, for 15 minutes and it yields a, a golden nectar full of growth factors. And that can be used uh, internally as well as in the lingam. Um, I also wanted to mention um, EPAT, which is extra corporeal pulse activation technique um, technology. That's a, um, ultrasound um, that is used on the lingam and can be used anywhere in your body. It's actually used primarily too for um, any sort of pains in the body for, and what it's used for, for erectile health um, and for, could be used for anyone, men and women, is for breaking up plaque on the outside. So now we have ability to not only break up plaque and calcification um, of our blood vessels on the inside through chelation IV therapy and plaque X, but on the outside in, we can actually break it up with EPAT, with extracorporeal pulse activation technique. And you mentioned Kegels too. Kegels um, are highly effective too as a monotherapy for ED, for organic ED. Again, we get so hyper-focused on organic ED. I like to think of it more as we're, we're um, rejuvenating and enhancing our, our sexual function. Um, but Kegels, um, uh, our practice, I have it in my book where I, there are certain practices where you do it twice a day, and they've been shown to be incredibly effective at, um, at you know, increasing basically sexual function. Um, and could also, I wanted to tell people that, you know, one thing I discovered was something in the East they've been trying to, um, for millennia, figure out ways to block semen release um, during, during sex. Um, I found that kegels are actually the easiest way to do it. That, you know, during the process of, of intercourse, when you you can pull out and allow, you know, slow things down and prolong the experience and get fully embodied in the experience. But then when that moment does arise where for men they there's this point of no return um, where this automatic process of semen release starts, you can just do the kegel technique, which is um, flexing the muscles. Uh, there's three different points. There's sort of the anus uh, around the lingam and then in between the Alcox canal. You can flex that and it'll keep your semen from going out. I mean, there might be a teeny bit, like it took me a little while to learn this technique, but um, basically the main goal is to avoid, you know, full climactic semen release as well as partial semen release. Um, and I was at first experienced a lot of partial semen release, but the kegels were what what really fit perfectly for avoiding semen release because I, again avoiding semen release is so critical it's keeping all of our life force inside of our body all those incredible growth factors hormones and nutrients cycles throughout our body during lovemaking um, and and it instead of distancing after sex we're actually able to stay close to each other and bond in, in timeless, breathless union. Cuddle time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like pass out time where you go into this other state. 
You know, yeah, it's I love, beautiful. Oh man, I love that the, the, when you nap together in each other's arms. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, um, where do you go to heaven? Right, yes, it's, it's nice. It's so it's so great. That's um, where sex. We should. We need to honor sex. Sex is is part of God. That's why I wrote this book. We're, we shouldn't shy away from it. I'm not afraid to talk about it. And I ask everyone to let go of their fears. The only way that you're going to experience transformation like I've gone through and what hundreds of thousands of people are doing now through the NOFAP movement of giving up pornography and addiction and anything in life, if you want to transform your overall physical health, neurology, um, your relationships, uh, is to let go of those fears. Because I just want to end this my portion by saying, asking each person out there, what is it that is blocking us from becoming the ideal versions of, our, of ourself? I mean, really, look at it. What exactly is it? Let's break it down. What is the thing that is keeping you from becoming that ideal version of yourself and working towards that right now? There's something that's doing it. And I ask that we just let ourselves go completely to all these misconceptions that our culture has been teaching us and let ourselves go to God and allow God to transform us. I love it. I love that you brought up the no fat movement. I learned that from my husband because uh, he's been on his own journey and he gave me permission to share this his whole life. He struggled and um, he couldn't he thought he was emotional. He thought there was like a mental emotional block, but he felt he internalized so much shame. And for him, it wasn't an erectile dysfunction issue. It was an, it was a completion issue. It's like he he was like he couldn't. It was he was desensitized, and so there wasn't there wasn't as much pleasure, and there was a lot of frustration. And then he just felt like oh this this is, and he just internalized so much, and he thought it was sort of his fault. And there's some yes right you know, and so there's there was a lot of emotion. So when when we married each other uh, 14 years ago. I was kind of surprised. I'm like, is it me? And he's like, no, it's not you. And so, of course, at first I thought, right. so how many, like the other partner thinks it's them, right? Yes, and so, exactly. That's what happens. Right. And he opened up and started sharing. I'm like, okay, well, let's work through this because I'm, I'm I'm very passionate about about a personal growth and I believe we're, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? So so we're like, oh, yes, well, let's, right. let's, let's dive into this. Let's figure out. So we did like a lot of em emotional work and we we talked through it and we, we were looking at different stuff and he got into looking at how pornography, how harmful pornography is. And he was like really blown away by that. The no fat movement. He looked into that and he, and, and is telling me about it. And, and, um, but with the, one of the biggest things, and that of course it, it blew his mind when he, um, joined like the no fap movement and and um and removed pornography and when he did that huge huge success around around that but the biggest breakthrough for him was uh this was uh f i want to say five years five or six years ago um maybe maybe a little bit longer uh, it was right around when medium.com came out and, and it was just brand new. And he's like, hey, you should write on medium.com. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, it's kind of like a blog, but instead of you having your own blog, everyone writes, a, everyone writes their own article on this thing. And I'm like, OK, well, let's look into it. And so I clicked on the health the health uh, section because I wanted to see what was in there. And the number one health article was on regrowing your foreskin. And at first we laughed. But then we realized they were being serious and we, we clicked, clicked on it. And it was this very long and detailed explanation of how to regrow your foreskin. Now, I have had I have an entire interview on circumcision. And also we talked about foreskin restoration, but on circumcision and, and everything you do lose, there's um, it's actually a part of your immune system. There's over 40,000. Uh, I think it was 40,000 or more nerve endings. Like you're, 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 there's a lot that is being removed from you that you'll never get back. But one, and one thing the foreskin does do is it protects so that, um, because without a foreskin, it's, it becomes completely desensitized, uh, the head. And so, I mean, imagine for women, imagine if, if your clitoral hood was removed, your clitoris would be raw and become, desensitized over time. So that's the same thing that happens to men. It's gen genital mutilation. And, uh, and so he, he regrew most of his foreskin. It, it took a few years, but once, um, 
he just wore a device and it wasn't painful at all. And, and he was very excited about it. And what we discovered is most of his problems from, you know, teenagehood up, most of his problems was that the, and this is a very common thing. They, they botch over 200,000 circumcisions in America a year are botched. And you don't know, sometimes you know it because it's obvious, but sometimes it's too tight and they don't, the doctor just does you don't know right and so it was too tight the, the 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 all the scar tissue was too tight for him and so once he regrew some foreskin it loosened up and also then it protected it um so there's less desensitization and it was it was like he could finally breathe it was it was so healing for him because he let go of a lot of that shame and the a lot of the negative negativity or you know, when he realized this this was this was a physiological problem not nothing nothing's he's not broken right and um and then in addition to doing the no fap and no porn um it, he's like for him he, it's like a, he's like a new person uh-huh. and so he's he was so excited so he he although he's a very uh private and um and um introverted person he gave me permission to share this because it could help others even if it helps one one other person um it's worth it to share so the, again there's so many avenues out there and you're not going to find it by going, you're not going to find the answers by going to one doctor, right? And this is what we're taught. Just no. go to the doctor's office. You have to dive in and dig in and explore. I, mm. I definitely recommend that listeners get your book. You are not broken. Just like my husband found out that he was not broken. You are not broken. A holistic guide for men and women to heal the pathways of sexual dysfunction and restore relational harmony together. A beautiful book. The links to... Uh, that book are going to be in the show notes of today's podcast, um, learntohealth.com. But also you can just go to brookhazen.com, which has um, so, so so much information there as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is, is there anything that you'd like to say to wrap up today's interview? Yeah, what you the point you just made, I, I agree that I, I, I look around and it seems like people are just sort of waiting to die. Like they're afraid to truly mm. live. And and that's the real message God wants to bring through my book is that we are actually able to, to revitalize ourselves, to gain that youthful vigor and vitality back in our lives. And I have techniques on every level, both spiritual, you know, neurological, energetic, physical, relational, that can help us to do this. Um, I just encourage everyone to be open and stay open and let go, um, let go of all these myths and misconceptions, these fears, um, so that we can actually start living again, because I was sort of dead myself before this. I was in the deepest darkness and in the deepest darkness, I've found the brightest light. And that's what I want to encourage all of you to do is to to live life fully. Don't be scared of living life. Don't just wait to die. And I do believe that our culture is corporate culture is really caused us to do and believe things that are slowly killing us. And we need to look out for ourselves now because we don't want to die because we're following some mistaken, you know, leadless, you know, corporate mantras that are being given to us and that we're exerting on others as peer pressure. We want to follow our own hearts and God and and lead what follow the science and do what actually is going to lead us to vitality, vibrancy and life. Love it. Thank you so much, Brooke, for coming on the show and sharing with us today and shining a light. We can we can help men and women lead. Fulfilled lives and empower them letting them know that they they can they can find answers they're going to keep digging they can find answers and that if a doctor says well you're going to have diabetes for the rest of your life you just have to learn you have to learn to deal with it it's 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 so not the truth i had eric adams the um the mayor of of new york city on my show and they they sent him home with a bag full of prescriptions and told him he'd be sick for the rest of his life he'd have diabetes high blood pressure cholesterol problems and heart disease for the rest of his life and he said nope 
and he turned to he turned to uh, whole foods a whole foods diet. He turned to natural medicine, and now he's on no prescriptions, and he's super healthy. And that's just one example of thousands and thousands of examples of that. If your doctor says you have to be sick, you know, you know it's genetic. Wh- whatever they say, do give give it a grain of salt. That's it. Just take it with a grain of salt, and 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 go. I'm going to find the answers to my health. Keep all you have to digging. do is all you have to do is let go. Just drink water, and literally you'll be better off than taking the pharmaceuticals. Just stop eating so much animal-based foods, and and stop watching pornography. Stop releasing your semen all the time. Donate blood. Let go. All these things are free. They don't make them any money, and that's why they are not interested in telling you about these things, but it's so simple and easy. We just need to wake up and see the elephants in the room. Mm. And I'd say find a holistic doctor as part of your team, naturopath, holistic doctor Mm. that believes in, in looking at all aspects of your life and helping you achieve that balance. It's really great to have a naturopathic doctor on your team or holistic doctor. Now there's some doctors that are green, they're greenwashed, you know, they say they're holistic, but then they like, Mm. they, they have, if they have their prescription pad on in their hand, ready to, ready to, (laughs) you know, you want a doctor that sits with you for 90 minutes. Naturopathic doctors are great. They'll sit with you for an hour to two hours, go through your entire life, uh, every aspect of your life and, and look at what they can do to help you in every, in every way. Uh, not just, not just what drug can I give you? They're looking for, they're looking to help you uncover all these different aspects of your life. And then hopefully they, they offer things like you said, like the Myers push or the, uh, the, the, the chelation therapy. And the, those are the kind of doctors I like that, that mm-hmm. they're on the cutting edge of the holistic science. So go, go find, go find one in your area and interview them. Go interview. A lot of times you can get a 15 minute free consultation, go interview a bunch of holistic doctors and, and work with the ones who, who sort of pass your litmus test um ask them what they think of 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 cholesterol meds and 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 see what they say and like like that's a good litmus test you know what do you think of cholesterol meds if i had high cholesterol would you put me on them and see what they say or what what changes would you make for me if i had high cholesterol and see what see what they say and uh, that's a good litmus test but but make sure that you have the right tools for the job and the right tools being the right practitioners to help help guide you there's all these scientific studies from really brilliant scientists that we can you know we can also i i actually wrote this whole book and researched this whole book with god's help and through intense research with scientific studies and through experience and experiential evidence from others you know we also have the power don't give away our power to western medicine and think that you know we can't do anything I did it. I healed it naturally. I had nobody leading me. They knew they didn't know what to do with ED. In fact, with ED, even naturopaths, I I totally encourage naturopaths, but even naturopaths don't necessarily know how to deal with ED. So sometimes you have to just realize that you have the power within you. Mm-hmm. Don't give your power away. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I love it. Don't give your power away. You have the power within you. Keep digging. Keep exploring. Thank you so Never much. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show and giving us all these little nuggets of, of uh, your wisdom. I really appreciate you coming today. And I hope that this podcast helps so many people. And please come back on the show if you uncover any m- new science that you want to uh, share about healing erectile dysfunction. Absolutely. I wish everyone the most beautiful, light-filled journey ahead for you.